Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 6 for chapter 5, and the topic for this chapter is the Laplace transform. In this video, we will learn how to solve the initial value problem by using Laplace transform. So, um, we will just start with an example and explain along the way, and uh, hopefully it shall be clear in the end what procedures are needed. So let's take an example. This is an example where um, if you um, write out the characteristic equation, as we have learned earlier, you have two distinct real roots. Okay, So the equation is the following, y double prime, minus 3y prime minus 10y equals 2. And I have two initial conditions. y0 is 1, y prime 0 is 2. OK, so um, such an equation with such initial conditions, um, we already know how to solve it using characteristics, finding roots, and finding um, the set of fundamental solution and the general solution, okay, and find a particular solution to fit the um, the non-zero right-hand side. Okay, so all that we already know. So keep those in mind, and uh, here we will look at how to use Laplace transform. Okay, so we'll take several steps. Step one is that we take Laplace transform of this equation on both sides. OK, let's get some notation. Let's say um, y is a function of t, and let's denote the Laplace transform of y to be capital Y of s. Okay. And then we know that we have to deal with the derivatives. We have to take transform of those, and that we know from the property of the derivatives. Okay, So the Laplace transform of y prime would be multiply s onto y s and collect the initial condition y0. And then putting y0 is 1, we get this, s y s minus 1. And then we also need to figure out the transform of the second derivative. And we have already derived formula for that. So this will be an s square multiplied on y s. And then an initial conditions in this form, s times y0 minus y prime at 0. Okay, If we plug in these two values, this is 1 and this is 2, then we get that. So um, pay attention here. This is something that's like in the opposite order of the other method. Here we see that the initial conditions, these two, they are the first thing to go in. So the, here's the initial condition, and here also are the initial conditions. Okay. So in the other method, when we use the um, characteristic equation and find the roots and find the general solutions with two um, um, arbitrary constants, C1, C2, and those will be determined at the end by fitting in the initial conditions. But here, the initial conditions goes in right away. OK, Okay. so let's take the transform of the equation. So we use the linear property, that is, we can take transform of each term, and we can pull out the constant. That, so the left hand side is transform of y double prime 3, transform of y prime minus 10 times transform of y. And the right-hand side is the transform of 2, which you can think is 2 times transform of constant 1. OK, so let's put in what we have found. So the transform of y double prime is this, which we put in here. And then 3 times the transform of y prime, which is this one, and we put in here and then minus 10 times the transform of little y is capital Y. And this is equal to the transform of a constant. So a transform of 1 is 1 over s, so transform of 2 is 2 over s. 
Okay, so I um, highlight this equation in red because now we see that starting from a differential equation for yt and then we did the Laplace transform then we ended up with an equation for y of s and this is an algebraic equation um, meaning that um, they only multiply and add a minus and divide terms in here okay so um, and uh, y occurs just as y so one can easily solve for y as a function of s okay so in fact um, one can keep the y terms on the left so this term and this term and this term and then one can move the constant terms these and then this one to the right hand side okay and uh, okay this would this is what we will do next okay doing that um, manipulation then we have the following all the terms involves ys stay on the left and we collect y as a common factor so we'll have s squared minus 3s minus 10 okay and then the right hand side is 2 over s that's coming from g equals to 2 and then um, s plus 2 minus 3 these come from the um, initial um, conditions okay and then we can um, manipulate this term a bit and write it into a fraction so it's s square coming from here minus s coming from here is negative 1 and plus 2 from here over s so um, one remark so um, look at this is a polynomial of degree 2 look at this polynomial of s in front of y s does it look familiar yes we see that this is exactly the characteristic equation where we had r right if we write out the characteristic equation it's exactly r square minus 3r minus 10 equal 0 okay so there's a lot of connection here okay so um, now we can write out what is y s so um, so it's just this one and divided by that and then this polynomial um, can be easily factorized to be s minus 5 times s plus 2 so that's what we put here so we have a expression for y of s in a, a fraction term and uh, numerator and denominators are polynomials and the numerator is a polynomial of degree 2 and the denominator is a polynomial of degree 3 and here we kind of prepare it and we write it into a factorized form so there are three terms in the denominator mm -hmm. we can comment on that and then we see that this term and this term they come from like the characteristic equation and the term s here comes from this s here and comes from this s here which is contributed by the source term of the differential equation okay so once we have found the capital y of s then the last step is to um, take inverse laplace transform to get recover the function y of t so we have talked about um, inverse laplace transform and the main technique is to find our way back so um, one would look at the denominators and to see that which terms would contribute to these denominators and then um, look at those terms and find the way back to see which function corresponds to those okay so a main technique which we have seen a little bit earlier and um, is a thing called a partial fraction okay so is the following so y s which is given here it has um, three um, factors in the denominator and then each are um, not um, a simple one not um, with without multiplicity okay so then I can break this um, fraction up into three fractions and each just has one factor on the denominator so I'll have some constant a over s and then plus some constant b over s minus 5 
and uh, the last term is uh, for s plus 2 so a constant c over s plus 2 so the job now is to find these constants a b and c because we know if we have found them then taking inverse transform would be easy then we will be taking inverse transform of each term where each term is a constant over either s or s minus a, a and which we know what the inverse transform would be okay so let's focus first on the calculation of the partial fraction okay then i would um write this back again into a fraction so the denominator would just be the product of these three terms and the numerator gets big but don't worry it's useful to have this expression so the a term will be multiplied with this factor and this factor so those two go in there and the term b will be multiplied by this s and this s plus 2 here and the term c will be multiplied by s and s minus 5 here okay so now we um, write we wrote this fraction equal this fraction where the denominators are the same so we must set the numerators to equal to the left hand side equal to the right hand side okay so um let's write it out so comparing the numerators the left hand side is here it must equal to the right hand side so we have an equation here that must be satisfied for any values of s and we want to find the constants a b and c that will make this an identity for any s okay so um how do we do that well um a kind of a um maybe intuitive way would be open this up since this is a polynomial of degree two i can open it up and collect s square turn s turn and constant turn and set them to be the same as the coefficient here and then you get three equations and you can solve it but as you can imagine that would take quite some work we can probably be smarter than that so remember what i said that this must hold for any values of s so we can choose a value of s in a smart in quotation smart way so that we can quickly find an a a b or c okay okay so let's take this idea so here i wrote the equation again in blue from the previous slides and i'm going to run with the idea that this equation holds for all values of s then i'm going to pick specific s's so an idea would be um i could choose an s such that two of the terms here become zeros only one is non-zero then you can easily solve for the coefficient in that term this is possible for this equation and because we have um, non-repeated roots here okay so let's see let's say i want to find the value a first then i wish to have this term and this term to be zero what s value should i choose well i see that they both contain the factor s so if i choose s to be zero these two terms are zero then i only get the a term okay i hope you see the trick here okay so that's what we will do if i put s to be zero then the left hand side is just two and then this term and this terms are zero and I only have this term, 0 minus 5, 0 plus 2, so it's negative 10. This gives me negative 10 times a equals 2. And that must hold, right? And therefore, I immediately get a is negative 1 over 5. Okay, so um, now, if we want to find b as our next target, what do you think? the s value shall be so look at this term and this term do they have a common factor yes s minus 5 
Can I make it 0? Yes, I can set s to be 5. Then this is term 0 and this term is 0. Okay, and that's exactly what we do. So if s is 5, I have 25 minus 5 plus 2 is 22. And then this is 0, this is 0. When s is 5, I get 5, 7, 35b is 22. Then I quickly get a b, 22 over 35. Okay, and uh, I hope by now it's clear what we have to do to find c. We want to make these two terms 0, then we see that s equal to negative 2 will do the job. And then if s is negative 2, then I get 4 plus 2 plus 2, which is 8. And then in front of c, I get negative 2 and negative 7, so is 14. And then c is uh, 4 over 7. Okay, then we have found the constants a, b, and c. Okay, so once we have found the y of s, now it's written into sums of three terms, and uh, each of them um, we can find the inverse transform easily. The, the function y of t will equal to adding them up, so it will be a plus inverse transform of 1 over s plus b times inverse transform of 1 over s minus 5 and plus c times inverse transform of 1 over s plus 2. The value a, b, and c we have just found. And then the inverse transform of this is constant and of this is an exponential function and also this is an exponential function. Okay, so let's write in the numbers. So a is negative 1 over 5, and then we get that, and that's b, and this gives me e to the 5t, and c is 4 over 7, and this turn inverse transform e to the negative 2t. Okay, so we have the solution. So note that the solution here already is fixed with all the coefficients. There are no arbitrary constants to be determined anymore, because the initial conditions, they went in at the very beginning of the procedure, so the constants are already embedded into this calculation, right from the beginning. Okay, so a, a remark or a comment is um, something I said earlier, so it's important, the roots of the denominator for ys, right, because they determine what terms you would have in partial fractions. So where do they come from? So these factors, s minus 5, s plus 2, they come from the characteristic equation. And the factor s is from the source term, g. OK, so um, from this example, um, we can summarize an algorithm for finding solutions for initial value problems using Laplace transform. So let's um, list it. So the first step is take Laplace transform on both sides. Okay. So here you will use up already the initial conditions. Okay. In the end, you will get an algebraic equation for y of s, the transformed function. And then um, solve this equation to get an expression of capital Y of S. And this one usually would be a fraction with numerator and denominator, both are polynomials. And the denominator, the polynomial, they will have higher order than the numerator. And then we need to take inverse Laplace transform of the capital Y to get the little y of t. And this step takes maybe most of the work, because then you need to figure out um, proper partial fractions to fit in for ys and calculate the constants in the partial fraction, and then write out the inverse transform of each term. Okay, so um, that's the end of this first example. Um, we went through with some more details because it was the first example and I want the ideas to be clear and we understand it well, okay? And uh, more examples will come, um, many more examples, okay? So I 
Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.